Does your PC suck? Low FPS, loud cooler, not enough storage? Let's upgrade it. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now, no matter how much you spent on your PC, there just comes a time when it isn't keeping up. In this How to Upgrade PC 2024 guide, we'll look at whether you should upgrade your old PC or build or buy a new one, and we'll cover what you need to know for how to upgrade the CPU, how to upgrade the GPU, how to upgrade RAM, how to install SSD, and more. If you get value out of this video, please give it a like so it really helps out the channel, and of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. With that, Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows licenses and that terrible activate Windows watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 10 or 11 OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, Windows is fully licensed for a crazy low price. And Windows 10 can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. And they have Microsoft Office licenses too. Use the links in the video description. First, do you even need to upgrade your PC or just refresh your system? Now the electrical components in your system, it should give you virtually the same performance today as when they were brand new. But if you feel your PC's performance has degraded, your issue might just be the buildup of a lot of background programs installed over time, possibly some incorrectly installed or just bugged Windows updates, hardware drivers, or other software issues. A Windows reset will fix all of this, and you can choose to keep your data as well. Go to your Windows settings under Recovery, click the Get Started button under Reset This PC. Then choose between keeping your existing files or doing a complete wipe of your boot drive. Note that even if we choose to keep our files, we will need to reinstall all of our programs. Once the reset's complete, you will need to set up your system again from scratch. And we have a whole guide on how to do this that I'll leave linked down in the video description. In particular, you're gonna need to reinstall all the chipset drivers for the CPU, the graphics card drivers, update the motherboard drivers, and reinstall the programs that you want basically do a brand new setup. You should also consider updating your motherboard BIOS to the latest non-beta version, something we also cover in our How to Set Up a PC guide. Now, doing a full Windows reinstall can restore a lot of lost performance, so consider this before spending your money on an upgrade that you may not need. The first question to ask is whether it makes sense to upgrade your existing PC, or if it's old enough that just makes more financial sense to build or buy a new one. Now, if you don't know what your CPU is, type in system information in your Windows search bar. Mouse over your CPU name and under the processor, it will tell you the name of the CPU and how many cores and logical processors, that's the Windows term for threads, that you have. For those looking to upgrade their GPU to play modern games at good FPS at 1080p or higher resolution, then I would only consider upgrading your current system if you have any AMD Ryzen CPU with the standard motherboard or 10th generation or newer Intel system. Anything else, it's likely time to build or buy new. If you decide it's time to start fresh, we have a ton of build guides and we do a monthly best build series, so check those out under the PC Builds and Parts List video playlist. Or check out our best pre-built gaming PC buying guide, both of which are linked down in the video description. If you have a pre-built gaming PC that you wanna upgrade, you do need to know whether or not you have a PC built with standard off-the-shelf parts by a system integrator or SI for short, or a PC built by an original equipment manufacturer or OEM for short, like Dell, Lenovo, or Acer. And those could include non-standard parts or they could use a limited motherboard BIOS, which will make upgrading certain components difficult or even impossible. If you have an OEM PC, you will need to do some research to see what's possible to upgrade in your system, but honestly, it's usually quite limited and you might just be better off buying a new one so you can check out our pre-built buying guide linked down in the video description. Let's get upgrading, starting with how to upgrade graphics card on PC. Now your graphics card or GPU is usually the easiest component to upgrade and should deliver the most FPS for your upgrade dollar. If you're wondering what GPU to upgrade to, you can check out our best GPU for gaming video and our best CPU and GPU combo videos. If you're gonna hold on to an older CPU and just upgrade the GPU, note that NVIDIA GPUs typically require more CPU resources than similarly performing AMD Radeon ones. In other words, if you have an older CPU, you'll likely get better performance from an AMD Radeon GPU as it's less likely to be bottlenecked by your older CPU. Another thing to consider is your power supply. Not only the wattage you're gonna need, but also whether or not you have enough PCIe cables for your new GPU. 
We show you how to size your PSU in our PSU buying guide, so I recommend doing that to determine whether or not you need a new PSU to increase your power for your new GPU, and we'll cover how to upgrade the PSU later in the video. Here's how to upgrade your GPU. To demonstrate, we upgraded a Radeon RX 6650 XT GPU to an RX 7700 XT GPU. The first thing to do is remove your existing GPU drivers and prepare the PC for the new GPU. Download Display Driver Uninstaller. Either Google it or you can use the link down in the video description. Once downloaded, extract the files to a location that you can find later. Now we want to reboot our PC into safe mode. You can either hold down shift as you select restart on the power button menu or in the Windows search bar type settings and select settings. Then in the settings search bar type recovery and click restart now under advanced startup and after your PC reboots to a blue menu, select troubleshoot, then advanced options, startup settings, and then click the restart button. Once your PC restarts again, select option four for safe mode. Now use File Explorer to navigate to where you extracted the Display Driver Uninstaller program and run it. In the drop down menu on the right hand side, select GPU and the brand of your GPU, which should pop up automatically. Click Clean and Shut Down and then wait until the program is done and shuts down your PC. Note that if your CPU has an integrated GPU, it'll also appear in this drop down menu, but obviously don't select that one, select your dedicated GPU instead. Now disconnect the system power by either pulling the plug or using the power button on the PSU. Personally, I do both just to make sure. Remove the old GPU by disconnecting any power supply cables going to it, unscrew it in the back, push down on the retention bracket lever on the main GPU slot on the motherboard, then wiggle it a little bit backwards and forwards as you gently but firmly pull upwards. Insert the new GPU the same way. Ensure the GPU retention lever is pressed down, then insert the GPU into the slot with a slight bias towards the front of the GPU. Press down firmly but gently until it's seated, then screw it in and connect the PCIe power cables. Note that sometimes the metal slot covers on the back of the GPU get stuck on the rear slots, so if it doesn't go in easily, check to make sure that you're not physically stuck on something. Power up the PC, and if you get a signal, great. Go ahead and boot into Windows, download and install the graphics card drivers from AMD, Nvidia, or Intel, depending on your GPU manufacturer. And we go through all of this in our PC setup guide. Remember, link down in the video description. If you don't get a signal, power off the PC and the power supply and double check the card and all the power cables are correctly seated. If you're using PSU cable extensions and are having issues, I recommend removing them and just using the native PSU cables to see if that helps as well. How to upgrade your CPU. The first thing you need to do is see what CPUs are compatible with your motherboard. Note that many older Intel and AMD Ryzen CPUs often cost more than the latest models, which have quite a bit more performance. So sometimes you'll want to consider upgrading both the motherboard and the CPU. For Ryzen systems in the 1000 to 5000 generation, your motherboard should be able to utilize up to a Ryzen 5000 series CPU with a BIOS update to the motherboard. If you aren't sure which one to get, your best bet is either get the Ryzen 5700X3D or the 5800X3D, as these Vcash chips crush any other Ryzen CPU for gaming. For Ryzen 7000 series owners wanting to upgrade to the next generation of Ryzen CPUs on the AM5 platform, these CPUs share motherboards as well. For Intel owners, 10th and 11th generation CPUs share motherboards in the 400 and 500 series, and 12th, 13th, and 14th generation CPUs all share motherboards in the 600 and 700 series. Check out the CPU support page for your motherboard for full compatibility, and make sure that you update the motherboard BIOS to the correct version that supports your new CPU before removing your old CPU, something we cover in our PC setup guide. In our example, we upgraded a Ryzen 5600 with a B550 motherboard to a Ryzen 5800X3D. Before we swap the CPU, let's talk about the cooler, or maybe you're just only upgrading the cooler. With the PC powered off and unplugged, carefully remove your CPU cooler. Unscrew it, then turn just a tiny bit side to side until you feel the thermal paste loosen up, then gently lift straight upwards off the CPU. For Ryzen 1000 to 5000 series systems, just be gentle enough that you don't pull out the old CPU with the cooler as the pins are on the CPU. While the CPU is still in the socket, use some isopropyl alcohol with paper towels to clean off the CPU and dry it, and install the new cooler retention brackets using the included instructions. If you're changing out the CPU, then lift the retention bracket. On Intel and Ryzen CPUs on the AM5 platform, you'll also need to lift up the secondary bracket. 
Now pick up your old CPU. Drop in the new one facing the same way, or line up the triangle on the CPU with the socket triangle, and gently drop it in with almost no force applied. On Ryzen systems on the AM4 platform, now we just push the retention lever down. For Intel and Ryzen systems on AM5, so Ryzen 7000 and newer CPUs, we close the retention bracket, then push the retention lever down. If you're reusing your old CPU cooler, clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol and dry it. Now apply thermal paste. I usually do an X with four very small dots and then spread it with a paste spreader or old credit card. If you're using a new cooler with pre-applied thermal paste, that's fine instead. Now we seat the screws by pushing down as we turn until we feel the screw has started to thread in, but don't tighten it down just yet. Now get the other screws seated, then we start tightening down a little bit at a time in a crosswise pattern to give it an even mounting pressure. Don't over tighten the cooler as it could damage the CPU. Medium finger pressure on the screwdriver is all you need using just your thumb and your forefinger. Connect power to the PC, boot it up, and jump into the BIOS to ensure everything is working properly, including that you have activated the XMP, DOCP, or Expo RAM profile to run your RAM at the full rated speed. Make sure to download and install the Intel or AMD chipset drivers for your new CPU. Again, consult our how to set up a PC guide for detailed instructions. If you end up not being able to get a system post with the new CPU, then I would definitely reset the CMOS as we show you in our how to set up a PC guide. Adding RAM to a system can either be very easy or nearly impossible. If you have a PC assembled with off the shelf parts, it's likely gonna be very easy. But if you have an OEM pre-built PC instead with limited options in the BIOS, it might be very difficult. Let's start off with the easy one. For those that own a standard parts PC, it typically just involves buying the right speed and amount of RAM you want. Also make sure to get DDR4 or DDR5 depending on your CPU and motherboard. See our best RAM for gaming for more on this. Note that we never recommend mixing and matching different RAM kits, and it's often cheaper to just buy a brand new kit and remove the old one instead. Changing RAM out is easy. With the system off and unplugged, remove the old RAM by opening the RAM slot. Some motherboards use two clips on either side, and some just have one clip with a dummy clip on the other side. Then just pull up with a little bit of longwise wiggle until the stick comes out. For two sticks, typically we use slots two and four, but double check your motherboard manual to ensure which slots you need to use, especially if upgrading from one stick to two. Slide in the sticks, latch the slots, power up your PC after plugging it back in, hold down the correct key at startup to get into the BIOS, this is usually the delete key. Ensure the memory is running using either XMP, DOCP, or Expo profiles at the proper speed. Note that the clock speed of the memory itself is half the speed of the RAM. So 3200 RAM runs at a clock speed of 1600 megahertz because DDR stands for double data rate. And for regular PCs, that's it. For OEM pre-built PCs other than HP OEM PCs, I would strongly recommend reaching out to your OEM and simply buying the RAM that they certify as being compatible directly from them. This is because it likely requires JDEC or JEDEC timings rather than the standard XMP profiles. The upside is that it should work and they should help you if it doesn't. And the downside is that it can be extremely expensive. So consider the cost when deciding whether to upgrade or build or buy a new PC. The rest of the procedure is similar, just consult the manual on which slots to use. Note that newer HP OEM PCs now allow the use of standard XMP memory profiles, so upgrading their RAM is the same as a standard parts PC. Let's talk about upgrading your system storage. Adding additional drive storage is relatively easy. If your motherboard has one or more extra M.2 slots, you combine M.2 NVMe SSD. Check out our best SSD for gaming video for more on SATA versus NVMe and the difference between PCIe Gen 3 versus Gen 4 versus Gen 5 drives and whether spending more for that speed increase is worth it. PCIe is backwards compatible, meaning you can run a Gen 5 SSD in a Gen 3 socket and the other way around, but you will be limited by the slowest component. So in both those examples, we'd be limited to PCIe Gen 3 speed. Check your motherboard specs as well, as some of your M.2 slots might be rated for different speeds. Also make sure that your slot is at least the length of your M.2 SSD and 2280 is the most common socket. Our example upgrade is adding one M.2 NVMe SSD to our Ryzen 5800 X3D PC upgrade. With your PC turned off and unplugged, make sure that the heatsink is unscrewed and removed, if there is one, as not all motherboards come with them, and that the screw standoff is installed in the correct hole. The M.2 standoffs and screws come with the motherboard, 
But if you've lost yours, I'll link a replacement kit for about $7 down in the video description. And the standoff should just screw into the motherboard. But if you're using a replacement kit, make sure it's the right height. Some newer motherboards have an adhesive thermal pad on the bottom of the socket. So if that's the case, then make sure to remove the plastic film. Then insert the M.2 at about a 45 degree angle and push it in until the connector area is seated into the socket. Then gently swing the drive down and screw it in. Or if your motherboard has a newer turn latch or a plug latch, use that. If using a heat sink on top of the drive, make sure to remove the plastic film from the thermal pad before you secure it in place by latching the end of the heat sink into place and securing it with a screw. This sticker on the drive is intended as a heat spreader, so I don't recommend removing it. For those adding in a hard drive or SATA SSD, with the PC turned off and unplugged, you wanna mount the drive to the case, locate an empty SATA port on your motherboard, and run the SATA cable to the SATA drive. Then you wanna plug in the SATA power cable from the power supply to the drive. Note that sometimes it's easier to connect the cables first, then mount it to the case. Once the drive is installed, go ahead and power up your PC and jump into the BIOS just to make sure it recognizes your drive. Also make sure the boot order is still to your primary boot drive. In Windows, using the disk management utility by typing that into the search bar until the words create and format hard disk partitions comes up, go ahead and click on that. You should be prompted to initialize the disk using either GPT or the older MBR formats, and I strongly recommend GPT. Navigate to the new drive and select it by clicking on it. Right click on the unspecified volume and select create new simple volume and follow the instructions on the volume wizard, naming it whatever you want. Make sure to use NTFS for the file system. And you're done. Now let's talk about how to upgrade the power supply or PSU. First, if you aren't sure how to size or buy the best PSU, then make sure to watch our best PSU 2024 buying guide listed in the video description. With the PC powered off and unplugged, Disconnect the existing PSU connections. Note that PSU connections on the power supply side are proprietary, so modular cables cannot be reused, something we specifically review in our best PSU guide, though third-party cable extensions can be reused. Once the old cables are disconnected and loose from any cable management, remove the PSU itself. Then install the new PSU. If it's modular, make sure you connect the cables you will need before putting it into the case. Then route the new cables back and reconnect everything using whatever cable management needed to get the cable secured and looking as clean as possible. Plug in the PC, turn on the PSU and press the power button to power your PC on. It really should be that easy. Are you planning to upgrade your system? Tell us down in the comments what parts you're upgrading and why. Remember, if you got value out of this video, hey, please give it a like so it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. And check out our how to set up a PC guide right here for instructions on updating your drivers, BIOS, RAM settings, and more. And we'll catch you on the next one.